Every day we live is another day in paradise. <coughs> and tonight, fellow postmasters and most welcome guests, it is my deep pleasure to share with you the story of one of my closest friends, Mike Maddox. Mike, at the age of 22, was an active and ambitious college student at Southern Utah University. He loved hanging out with friends, exercising, and racing dirt bikes. He aspired to get a degree in computer science, and his dream job was, has always been to work in network security in the IT realm. I've known Mike since 2004 as one of the most charismatic and resilient individuals. At the age of 22 was when he had his first heart attack. And his cardiologist advised that he would be lucky if he lived to the age of 25. For you see, he was born with hyperlipidemia, a condition which causes abnormal lipids and fats to develop in the blood system. Fast forward 18 heart attacks later, and Mike Matter is one of the happiest 32-year-olds alive on the planet. Throughout this 10-year span, and that's about one heart attack for every six months, he went through life changes. He had 34 coronary stents placed inside his body. Coronary stents are like tubes that prohibit the arteries and veins from clogging up. He also had one ICD pacemaker installed on the left side of his, right side of his <coughs> chest, connected to his heart. The pacemaker acts like a small defibrillator, which has saved his life numerous times. Sad to say that he also was also forced to give up his dreams, drop out of college, and relocate from St. George, Utah, to Salt Lake City, Utah, to be closer to the hospital because he did not know if his next heart attack would be the one to kill him. His heart attacks became more frequent, his health deteriorated, and the quality of his life diminished. It now became his full-time job to figure out how he was going to stay alive instead of go to school and work. And this was all at the age of 22. When he moved to Salt Lake City, he had a devastating heart attack that truly wiped out his quality of life, and it was then that his cardiologist recommended that his only way of improving his long-term outlook in life was to go through a combined heart and liver transplant. <coughs> Mike eagerly signed that three-year waiting list in order to save his life. And during that time, he got married to continually a cardiologist. <laughs> <laughs> that would only make sense. Unfortunately, as his health kept deteriorating, his heart attack became more severe, more, more pronounced, and more frequent. She decided that she no longer wanted to stick around and file for divorce. The stress of going through the divorce and the anxiety of being on a three-year waiting list to save his life took a tremendous toll on his already sensitive condition. And eight months ago, That's ready for what happened eight months ago? Eight months ago, God gave him two beautiful gifts, and that was the gift of a new heart and a new liver. Mike Matter was the first adult in the Inner Mountain region and Utah to have gone through such a life, such a complex life saving procedure successfully. And I believe that it could not have happened to a much better person. He truly deserves that, that heart and that liver. His friends and family said that they saw an immediate impact right after surgery. 
and he never believed how well he could feel. He walked on day one and he left the hospital on day 16, far sooner than what his doctor had predicted. Mike attributes his success of staying alive to his friends and family. And I also know that another notable key success factor in his ability to stay, al stay alive is his resilient attitude, his cheerfulness, and his positive outlook on life. Again, it could not have happened to a much better person. Unfortunately for him, just like any other individual who receives a transplant, he needs to go on anti-rejection medications for the rest of his life. And that is so that his body does not reject his newfound organs. His heart gives him strength and his liver gives him normal life cholesterol. Earlier in the meeting, I, played, I gave you all a slip of paper. If you were to please flip it over, you can see a picture of Mike Matter. And you also see a link to a funding website where you may be able to fund him. And I would encourage you to. By funding him, you will be doing three things. Number one, you will be helping offset his expenses and pharmaceutical costs. Number three, you will help him continue his aspirations of majoring in computer science and finally acquiring his dream job in network security. And most importantly, number three, you will prevent his body from rejecting his organs, which will allow him to stay alive. If his body rejects his heart or his liver, he will die. And trust me, his donor does not want him to die. <coughs> Mike is an extremely resilient individual and he says that there was nothing there there is nothing that will prevent him from accomplishing his dream. And I believe that every all of us can take away something from this story. And that is if you are faced with adversity or struggle, whether or not you see the light at the end of the tunnel, the most successful and significant driving force will be your ability to keep pushing forward and your resilient attitude. Remember, every day is another day in paradise. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you. Thank you. Can I take yes, of course, of course. As I am showing you guys my strength, please continue your warm, warm of, of applause for Mr. Carlos Alvarez. <laughs> And my strength, thank you very much. <laughs> As he showed us his care for Mr. Mater. And as you are filling out your slips, I want to share with you yet again another moment, important moment, in civil rights history. On the 28th of August, 1963, about 200,000 people joined the March on Washington, congregating at the Lincoln Memorial.